Yeah, by people that have no clue. It is Mr. Uh, oh, I'm Jonathan. And this is? Fieldy. Headley. And we're in corn, and we've taken over Rage tonight. And we're going to be playing some videos that we picked. And I hope you like them. So check these cross out. Cross over some music. Some musicals. Music, music. What? Sick. Did you just mess up? Uh, you're trying to smell me. <laughs> but anyway, check these out. Hope you like Noble. them. You want to be in this way? Just sit down and sit back. Come on, man. Come on, man. Kick back, please. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me. This is your man. Yes. Hi, Brian. This is Brian. This is the one. You got it. So this is. How you doing? This is uh, John Mills, a fistful of metal, and uh, WIDB Darkness Descends. I'm sitting here with uh, my bud Tony here. We're sitting here with Corn, Jonathan, and Brian. Um, they've been all over the CMJ charts. They've been number one for the past 11 weeks, and they're not coming off my number one chart for a good another six or seven weeks, probably 10, 12, probably for the rest of the year. Um, <laughs> really, really, I, I mean, I have a serious neurosis about these guys. I, all I've been listening to for the past two weeks. Um, my first question I wanted to get with you guys was uh, the uh, the crowd change. Have you noticed like a crowd change from the uh, like your tour from Sick of It All, then going straight to Danzig? Yeah, um, we've noticed. Just a little bit. Um, well, I think the beauty of our band is, is we draw so many different kinds of people at our shows. That's why we, we, we can travel with a punk band or a hardcore band and then go out with dancing and bring these people. We get mixed crowds, and that's really what we want. We just want to play to everybody. Man. It's not a it's not a hardcore or punk or rave or anything. It's just we just want to play for everybody and just give us a chance. How's your action been with the dancing tour? Oh, it's nothing. It's been nothing but good for us, man. Kids freaking out, and that's what we like. It's a good time, man. Fun. Yeah, t Tony over here, if you've noticed the sideburn, show him off, Tony. We have a Danzig fanatic with us, so this is going to be one you know, killer show tonight. I'm, I'm going to bust the other knee. <laughs> uh -oh. More people to join. Come here, monkey. <laughs> Monkey's joining us. Uh, monkey. Monkey's going to come over and join us. Yeah, see, monkey. monkey, here. Sit here. Oh, see if we can get this in here. What? Oh. Um, the old man. Yeah. You look familiar. Because I interviewed you two weeks ago. Did you know the kids had a I'm going to interview you guys again in another two weeks. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not wearing the same thing. <laughs> you are. I'm not. You were. Okay. Um, how did you guys go around get, you know, getting signed and stuff? How was like, you guys are from like the Orange County thing? It was really, really hard work. Um, we just, we practice every day and we just started booking shows. We play up to three or four shows a week mm -hmm. all over Orange County. And uh, we just played, 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 played to get just to build that draw. People tell their friends, and we get a bigger draw. Then our managers start getting industry and into us, and we just started having more and more industry people show up until it just blossomed, and we got to pick and choose what we wanted. Yeah, I have a message from uh, Smitty, Joe, I think Lauren from Concrete, that when you guys get back to California, they're gonna take you out and get y'all messed up. All right, <laughs> that sounds like them. That sounds like them. <laughs> well, cool. Well, well, we're gonna go to a song and or a video or whatever, and uh, we'll be back here with some more uh, questions for Corn here, and uh, we'll be right back. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> and he fucking kills me. I went to a Pantera show a couple weeks ago and got twisted. Uh oh. Ah. You want to ask you to take the microphone? Or I like it. <laughs> Only on video day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have some questions for me? Yeah, I do. All right, we're back with the guys from Corn here. And I was wondering, like, you guys, uh, your sound is something I haven't really heard before. And I'm wondering, like, where your influences are. Is it... Well, to tell you our influences, man, um, the band, is a, is the band, except without me and Brian, Brian got the band and watched for me. They've been playing for a good seven to eight years together. So they got a chance to go through all the, you know, the styles of music they want. And finally, when we got in the band and we got our vibe going, I think it's basically each of us feeding off each other because we all listen. We don't know the band listens really any heavy music. I listen to like all kinds of weird stuff. David's into the Bee Gees, Monkey's into like Bungle and, and weird like opera stuff. It's so when we write, we're coming for the riff, 
And I think it's, we don't ever go, let's go towards this kind of band, let's go Pantera, do it, Helmet. It's like, each of us just has our own ideas that we try, and that's the beauty of our band. No one's afraid to say, hey, that's stupid. Yeah, and right. get their feelings hurt. So it's really, all five of us, just our influence. He's my influence, and he's my influence. And Fuck that thing. That's what it is. <laughs> For all of us. Cut, this is yeah. But yeah, that's, that's what it is. And it's just that vibe, just all of us, that we feel the music, they know what I'm writing about, and they, they can relate to it too, so they put just as much as I do into it. It's, that's that's how we get ourselves. And I'm really proud of it, because yeah, it's, it's you have no idea how hard it is to come with your own sound. And, <laughs> I'm proud of it. Well, I mean, you guys have done it. I mean, like, it, John let me listen to it about, uh, was it about a month and a half ago? Something like that, and I just, it's, I've never heard anything like it, and I just think Thanks, you guys are... So that makes it all worth it, man. Yep. Absolutely. I have a question. I might ask some of the same questions, because the last interview we did was, uh, it was getting kind of late toward the show, and everybody was working back and yelling and loading ice, and uh, it was really, really dark, so I'm going to kind of, like, cut these two interviews in together, and maybe they'll uh, work. Monkey came up with it. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of show you like uh, the dark side of everything that's innocent, pretty much. You know, because without this, it's an innocent picture. But when you add the shadow, it's the dark side to the picture. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like right? the unknown. Uh, Do you think it could be misinterpreted though? Yeah. Yeah, by people that have no clue. It is misinterpreted. Uh. It's misinterpreted a lot, but it is. Eh? It's who, whatever who's you can say. You know, if it's misinterpreted or not. You know, your interpretation just is their interpretation, not that it's a misinterpretation. It's all of opinion, the situation. Right? <laughs> yeah, but you can understand how people could get a little upset about something like this. Well, let him. Why is he doing anything? He's not doing nothing. Is she doing anything? You know, that's her dad no. carrying a horse. Yeah, he's getting ready to play some horseshoes, and he's asking her if she wants to play a game. But the sun's in her eyes, so she can't see who it is. And all he's saying is, honey, you want to so play some horseshoes? Just jump to one conclusion or another. You need to step back and look so at it. So then why not just put a picture of anything, Are a tree okay? or something? Because we like that picture. We like horseshoes. Antonio driving up to Chicago and you got that part in the middle where you get like really heavy to you know knick knack pay like give it all the bone me and Tony are just jamming out to it and Tony in his moment of clarity kind of looks at me and goes hey John um do you know we're getting like really violently aggressive to Mother Goose yeah. and we're like I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? I'm like, what are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> if you like look at the words Nick Mac, Paddywhack, Give a Dog a Bone, This Old Man Came Rolling Home. I think a man rolling down the street is kind of violent. Mm -hmm. And if you look, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and I say, Baba ba, Black Sheep underneath, those are pretty kind of racist to me. I mean, Baba ba, Black Sheep having a wool, yes sir, yes sir, three back full. Mm -hmm. And it's self explanatory. All nursery rhymes, we've grown up thinking they're, they're innocent, but they're not. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not the Black Death or about, like, well, London Bridge is falling down. I don't think that's really. Fun. Yeah, right. that's just yeah. like kind of going back to the, the record cover itself. It's like we want everybody to see the all the like dark in everything innocent, especially like the nursery rhymes. Oh, right. There's always it's like you get good and bad. There's just those two forces. Isn't the ashes ashes song? Is we all about, fall down. It's about some disease that everyone dies, dies and they go to hell or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's just all about death. Everything. And when you're a little kid, you're all. Remember, they had no clue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is all what we're taught when we, when we grow up, because when you're born, you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And now kids get fed full of cartoons. All, the only entertainment is blowing a ship up or doing something on video games. And that's, look around. People are killing each other. And that's all they know. That's that's the cool thing to do now. So that's all we're, we're singing about. And um, my, well, my thing, my favorite song on here is uh, Faggot. They didn't know you had the problems with, like, uh, with people growing up, you know, people getting you a hard time because of the way you look, you know, long hair and you know, dreadlocks. Well, like well um, when I was in high school, I was like a total fine arts nerd. Mm -hmm. All I did was in everything. I was in orchestra, pipe band, and all that. And so I wasn't in the cool crowd. I wasn't in the football crowd, the cool clique. So, of course, they called me a faggot. I wasn't, I know I get stereotyped like that. And, and a lot of people can relate to that. If you have long hair, they go, what's up, long hair? What's up, corn? They, they call them corns and everything. And I think that's all, that's not right, man. People don't need to act like that. And I get my revenge now because those people that picked on me come to my shows, jump up and down and say they're faggots. So I think that's pretty sick. I got my, I got my revenge. <laughs> we love it. All you MTV children you know jumping around thinking you're faggots. That's just wonderful. Um, we're going to go to uh, another video and our song. And um, we're, we're going to be playing this song all night on uh, Darkness Descends. And then we'll come back for a few more segments. Corn. Thank you. 
But oops, I can't go with these interruptions. Wait, my arms are. There's a picture you asked for. Thank you. Hi, Joel. Be the man, Joel. Joel's the man. Go <laughs> back. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, we're back here with uh, the corn. I was not sure we, uh, we have uh, Monkey, Jonathan, and Brian here sitting with us. Um, as the interview goes along, more and more people keep walking to the door and joining the interview. So pretty soon we'll probably have you know, the whole band in here. <laughs> now, um, I'm sorry. There's one thing I, I do want to say earlier. It's like I, I mentioned how like you know, your sound is just you know totally incredible. I mean, it's just an incredible sound. And going back to what we were just talking about with like the nursery rhymes and like the song Faggot Huts, you know, I, I actually sat in like... Uh, the first few times I listened to the album, I listened to it and just for like, I'm like, wow, these guys really kick ass. And the more and more I listen to it, the more it's just like, you know, it really sounds like, it's like everything you talk about, the way you guys uh, portray it, it's just like very believable. Yeah, you know that's, I mean? what, that's the biggest thing we base on is on total honesty. We're not trying to be off of any like concept or fake thing. It's each one of those instruments represents their personalities to the T. David is so totally neat and like tidy in his drumming shows that Reggie's just like this tough guy, you know, got the attitude, everything, and that comes out of his playing. He's a weirdo. He plays weird. Brian's a klutz, but he can sure <laughs> and play a good guitar and comes up with some stuff. I don't know how he does uh, it. See? And then me, it's just it's all our personalities, and we all, the, the big singers, we just get along so well. Yeah. And when I when I came out and tried out for the band, it's like I knew him for years. It's, it was just so meant to be. So I think this was meant to be, and I'm just here now. To, uh, after the dancing thing. Um, I think we plan on doing like our own, own couple of our own shit. Just go around and uh, get a chance to see us play longer. And we just, uh, we just want to see, we want people to see us play, man. You don't know what coins about until you see us live. I mean, the album's good and everything, but you have to see us live to really see what we're about. Mm -hmm. That's just the whole vibe. I, I can, um, I can attest for that. No, if they don't have me down in that little section, I'm, I'm going over the wall. They're gonna throw me out tonight. That's wonderful. Yeah, if you guys have seen out there, there's like a little tiny pit area, and there's like, yeah. yeah. And we, we were here for Slayer about a few months ago, and then I, I bugged the guy for like the whole machine head and biohash. I'm like, come on, let me out there, let me out there, let me out They only let a certain number of people. Yeah, there was so many, but that, you know, when you get in the big venues like this, that's how it is. Yeah, yeah. Right, Julian? Uh, after a while, I bugged the guy like yeah, all night bugged. long. I miss the club, man. You can do anything you want. Yeah. I miss the. Hopefully, yeah. I'm soon again. Yeah, me and John were talking earlier about the, up by us in Chicago, there's a lot of smaller places that have closed down lately. For, and they've turned into like techno clubs and this oh, and that, yeah. but there are places where it's just almost, and there's no rules, no security guards, nothing, but the I vibe there was just great. Was bad. I love that club. Metro's a great place. Speaking of Boss, I'll bungle there a few years back. Oh, it's great. Jealous. <laughs> me too, I want to see him. I haven't seen him since 92. Yeah. It was, it was incredible. Uh, Mike Patton, at the end of the show, took a back foot onto a drum set and then uh, stayed there for the rest of the show. The drummer got up, looked at him, kicked him, and walked off stage. The rest of the band walked off stage and left him there, lying. I mean, it was like a good 15 feet foot back drum. He's, back he's an incredible artist, man. Yeah. That guy is an artist. He is. Cool. Maybe, maybe we'll go dig up some bungle for these guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, and uh, we'll come back for uh, one one last segment of corn, and then uh, we'll just watch this or listen or whatever you're doing. So, right Bye. <laughs> Torch. Um, you got any other questions that you think Brian you really really want to ask? Last segment, speak up. I just, I, like I said, just, like, you guys, your, your sound is totally just great. Just like uh, you know, something of the honesty in it. The whole vibe, man. That's what heavy music should be. Totally. I see, I don't know, I see like a lot of music now being poisoned by politics and everything. And people don't want to hear that shit, you know, it's an escape. Um, I had a question on your sound, like some of your, your songs. Oh, it's taping. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, had a, I, had a, I had a question with your sound. Um, um, there's a lot of songs like it toward the end, like uh, Fake and Lies. Um, you guys have like a, like a bar sound. Um, do, you, do you like bar the guitar without dropping, dropping the, the, uh, like deep tuning? No, we can't say nothing. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I was just wondering. That's cool. No, they, okay. just, they just know how to play the guitar really well. <laughs> I didn't want to give away any secrets or anything. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's why. <laughs> no. Oh, the whole album. We did not sample nothing. People think we sampled stuff. Oh, Let's make that clear. Cool.
Actually, I do have five. Oh, so we skip it. Okay. This makes it easier for editing, trust me. Okay. Okay, we're back here with uh, porn, uh, Brian, Jonathan, and Monkey, who's sitting behind me, and I think Tony's got a question. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, uh, this is something that just, in all bands in general, I just figured since we've got a band cornered here, I'm going to ask him that. Uh, the choice for, like, putting lyrics in the album, is that, like, personal choice, or is that just... Oh, yes. I wanted it, because, you know, you get a lot of albums, you get the lyrics in there, people just read them, and that's it. I wanted people to actually listen to the album and try and figure out what it is and get their own meanings off of it. And I think that's the whole beauty of music and that's how it should be. Yeah. So, I mean, I get lots of kids coming up to me and telling me different lyrics and different meanings and it's like, all right, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's what they got out of it and that's what they're meant to get out of it. So, that's, that makes it worth it to me. Because there's some parts in there I don't say nothing and kids come and tell me what I'm saying and I, I love it. <laughs> it's cool. It's really cool. Cool. Um, I had a question about that. the last song, Daddy. Um, the, the daddy being somewhat of a disturbing song in itself. If you let it play, you let it play to like for like 14 minutes. A hidden track comes on, and it's like a, like two white trash people. Like yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, where did you get that? Daddy, a, do you, a producer has rental houses out in Barstow, and he's out there cleaning one out. A couple left, and he found that tape, and he brought it in, and he played it for us. And I thought it was perfect. It was funny, but I thought it just totally showed the stereotypical white trash family and what kids have to go through that they listen to, you know, it just was perfect for the ending of daddy. It just shows, it shows you what it's like. I mean, they're fighting over a Dodge Dart. <laughs> it's stupid. But, and it's also, it's funny too. People get, laugh out of it and some people get the real meaning out of it. So, it's all good. It's all good. Um, you guys have any uh, weird stories or anything from the world you'd like to share with us? Stuff that's happened on stage? Have you had, like, anybody, like, try to get on stage and do it? Uh, not on this tour, but Biohazard Tour it was... That was funny. We had we got initiated. They bought about 50 pounds of, of corn on the cob, popcorn, <laughs> raw. raw popcorn, and a big old Econo can of cream corn. And Bobby runs out, pours it over my head while we're playing. <laughs> Leaves the can on my mic. They start chucking us with corn, and then they get wireless mics and they and they talk. All this yeah, crap through the monitors. Through the monitors. While we're playing, while we're playing. Said, like the house. No one in the house right. can hear it. Just us. No, we're kicking it with your girlfriends up here. Oh, they're <laughs> while we're playing. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I've had that happen to me before. Like people well, come up, like be tuning like guitars and stuff, and you be playing on stage, and you're like. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. So, no, I didn't want us happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was our very first tour, and they, they, they broke us in pretty good. <laughs> so That's really fun. We did, we did an interview with Bobby about a month and a half ago. And yeah. All of us did. And <laughs> sounds like fun, the person. Man. I couldn't get that cream corn out of my hair for weeks. It was sticky. <laughs> That was, that was cool. Where, where did you get that, where did you guys get the, the name Corn? Well, I was at a party in Bakersfield, uh -huh. uh, and uh, there, there was these two drunk homosexuals at the party, and they're just going off on how they were, how they had sex with each other, and he said the one guy was sucking out the other guy's butt, and he blew diarrhea all over his face, and he said he loved it, and when he opened his mouth, he had a corn curl on his tongue. So uh, I totally disgusted everybody, so I used to walk around town, and people would need a story, go Corn, and be all, oh, and get sick. <laughs> So I, I just, we asked, me and um, the band were just kicking back on the pier one night, and I said, what do we call the band Corn? And everybody seemed to dig it. And so, um, and Rich says, spell with a K on it. And so we just spelled it like a little kid would spell it. Mm -hmm. The backwards R and everything. And another reason we named it Corn, because we think the band makes the name, not the name make the band. And we got a lot of crap for being called Corn. People are all, Corn? Oh, no, we can't name the band Corn. So we just say it's the music, it's not, it's not the name. So that's how we did it. And that's, that's the corn story. And everybody's got corn stories. It's, it's, it's a universal thing. Yeah. That just goes along from what I'm saying. It just goes along with everything you guys are about, with like the name, the style of music, the, your album covers, and everything. Just, yeah. It's just it's just reality, man. Yeah. People, things people don't want to, to, to take in. The truth. And, well, I'm going to put it in their face. All right. And if they like, they like. If not, then give it to a friend. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about the album cover before, you should see this, and on the cover it's like a little girl in the swing set and a man, and, and you turn it over and she's gone. So you just kind of know. But you got to look and see, what is that? What is it? Yeah, right. like, I, I've studied this picture, this looks kind of like a, like a foot or something, he's holding a shoe, maybe like a club foot, and yeah. like, this looks like a claw. <laughs> no, this is her dad, and he's carrying horseshoes, he's got them carrying, you know, playing horseshoes, and he's picking her up. Yeah, it's dinner time. It's dinner time, man. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are messing with my head. It's all about interpretation. It's whatever you get out of it. Yeah, it's because when John, when John actually when, uh, gave me this, and I, and I had it for a while, and I, you know, this didn't even this. consider, for, I didn't even take that, in, you know, for yeah. a while. This is the real thing. This yeah. is all, this is what life's about. You know, this is what I'm getting to right here. 
That picture sums it up like, all. Monkey came up with this and was some genius. That picture. Yeah. Right, guys, go out, get, go out, get the corn album, kill if you must. That actually took uh, a while. Right? That's, that's, that's me and Monkey growing up. <laughs> you're a little kid, you get screwed with them. I mean, it beats on you and you can never sing nothing, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another real cool thing, to see all the members in the band, it took me a while to figure this out, but I've got to kind of flip it over here and connect it. And <laughs> <laughs> Messing with my head. Well, cool. No, thanks for coming out and doing the interview, guys. It no was really, really, really cool. You guys yeah. stay staying number one in my charts forever. Thank you, man. And uh, so this is Corn. Um, go out. I'm going to show you the video blind. It's out. Tony sent it to me, and I'm going to keep on playing it. I'm going to throw this down your throats. Go out, get the album, kill if you must. Oh, really? Excellent. Uh, I'm loving it. So uh, this is uh, John and Tony. Tony, the Bambi killer of Esposito. Wow. The killer of Bambi. He's a damn yeah. fanatic. So. What's up, man? Cool. All right. Then, um, well, guys, take it easy. See some more music. And we'll see you on the next show. Take it easy. Cool. Thanks again, guys, for taking